so much for joining us today. Uh, it's a little bit of a challenge because we have people in 72 countries. So when it's uh, very early in Los Angeles, it's already very, very late the, ne the day before uh, in Asia. Uh, and uh, it's a little bit uh, challenging, but we, we took a time which is an average time good for uh, United States and good uh, for Europe and good from at least comfortable even with India, more complicated with Australia. But uh, that we can only do if we, if we make two meetings. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I need to say uh, it was, uh, we made that meeting by, uh, as you say, as you say uh, by uh, popular demand. We did not have a meeting for a long time because we have been involved in different uh, organizational uh, issues, a lot of uh, structural issues, growing up, uh, growing, absorbing the growth, and also uh, many new initiatives and important initiatives uh, that we have been doing, including in terms of a uh, little bit of emergency, which is uh, modifying our program uh, a little bit, is uh, helping Ukraine. So that became uh, on, the, on the front burner of the emergencies. Uh, I have uh, with me uh, Dr. Lebovitz, who is uh, the founder, co-founder with me and the chairman of the Mental Wellness Society. He's in Pittsburgh and he will uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, what he's doing a little bit later, but just to help to understand when he will be uh, speaking, he's a, a clinical, psych, uh, uh, clinical um, cognitive therapist in Pittsburgh, and he's taking care of children and uh, teenagers from... I like to uh, say... I like to say I work with adolescents of all ages. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Cotia Serin is joining us soon from Spain. I will actually. Uh, I'm here. You Hello. are here. So, Coti, uh, now we see you. So, we have Cotia Serin, who is also a co founder. She is joining us from uh, Madrid. And uh, Coti is, uh, in fact, uh, the head of the Spanish tribe, and she will tell you more about all that very soon. So let's speak about a little bit about how different uh, task force and our different activities. So we are starting with you. Uh, Coti, you have four minutes to tell us about your task force, uh, about uh, your Spanish tribe. Of course. Hello. It's a great pleasure to be here with you and to see this wonderful family about doing a better world because Mental Wellness Society is about doing a better world. So inspired by our colleagues from the Mental Wellness Society Task Force and the wonderful job you are doing. And of course, inspired by the conversations we uh, usually we have constantly with Abraham Gerard Mayer, with Spanish tribe, thought to replicate the work you are doing in the task force for Ukraine and to do that for some Spanish speaking countries. Unfortunately, some of the, these countries are living in, co in, con in conflict constantly. And the risk, the risk we have is because this is not current, we can see them as something normal. And that's what's happened. And this is how from the Mental Wellness Society Spanish tribe, we are designing an aid project with a center for displaced people from Venezuela in, uh, to Argentina, in Argentina. Specifically, we are working with Cordoba. This is one of the main cities in Argentina. The idea, the main idea is to create a pilot project that if successful could be transferred and personalized to other countries. 
The project now is in its preliminary phase. We are doing a research, what they have, what they have that works and what, what do they need exactly. Our idea is to train a group of volunteers and monitor them to help the caregiver. And on one hand, to systematize the tools that they already have, find, find out exactly what the AMED needs are, and to try to support them emotionally and psychologically, and to prevent some phenomena, common phenomena, in those situations as burnout. So we are happy to invite you to help us. And you must know that this is creating, creating a very, very good team and doing a job that until I get into this, I could never dream about what's the really situation. If you have some questions, uh, how many members you have in your Spanish tribe? We are about 20 people, 20, 25. But really now in its pre preliminary phase, we are working like six or seven. We know that for taking, for doing a research, for taking, for making decisions, we don't need a lot of people working. But I can tell you, Abraham, and all this amazing group that I know that at the moment, it will be working. We have, we will have a project. All of the members will work and uh, to be volunteered there. Yeah, and you have been spending time on translating in Spanish many of the documents we have uh, in America or for Ukraine. Yeah, and and I'm sure that all the mindful choice tools will show them at the field. Okay, great. Okay, so. Uh, I would like now to ask uh, Victor Vuz to tell us about uh, who he is, what he is doing, what we do together with him in Ukraine, because Victor has been coordinating for us uh, our activity of Mental Wellness Society in Ukraine. In fact, uh, we are a global organization, and when the Russian invaded uh, Ukraine, uh, we say, hey, we have a member in Ukraine. Uh, what well, we need to contact him and say what we can do with him. And uh, we started to create our task force, uh, Help Ukraine. So, Victor, tell us about uh, your activities. Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, I would like to express my high appreciation uh, to all of the uh, efforts of uh, Mental Wellness Society. And um, I would like to say that the main matter of Mental Wellness Society is wellness, yeah, mental wellness. That's why this uh, all activities which were created by Mental Wellness Society uh, contribute uh, to population wellness uh, of unions. Uh, what I mean exactly that uh, I can say that all Ukrainians were shocked, shocked with the first uh, first news about the war. Uh, we were in <clears throat> extremely troubled situation, uh, in situation of uncertainty. That's why. Um, uh, well, actually, Victor, are you with us? Hello, Victor. Okay. Uh, so there we go. Victor is back. Okay. Yeah, um, uh, I don't know what, what where happened. So I would like to say that uh, all efforts were like virtual elbow uh, for, for, for all of us. We feel we uh, felt this support, this uh, contribution, this uh, help for us. That's why it really contribute to increasing uh, feeling of well, uh, feeling of wellness in the population. Uh, 
um, commonly with Dr. Abraham, we initiated a discussion club. We created uh, task force U Ukraine. Uh, we uh, engaged National Psychological Association of U U U U Ukraine for all, for all of our activities. We organized a media channel to for uh, global about the situation with wellness uh, in Ukraine. We uh, received many feedbacks from, um, from different people, from different regions of the world. So uh, it means that uh, all efforts we, uh, we uh, established within this task force uh, support in U U U Ukraine uh, they contribute to the to succeed of the main aim uh, of what we do. Uh, I would like to say that uh, we uh, had uh, about uh, every in average five hundred participants who were engaged to our discussion club. Firstly, we organized this discussion club with Dr. Sherry, then with Dr. Amrit uh, Oren, and with other psychologists, with other professionals. We, organ we uh, organized several trainings. Uh, we organized cooperation with uh, Israel Trauma Coalition, and commonly with them, uh, we, uh, have, we have a program for 2,000 2, helpers. Uh, in Ukraine, in uh, education, uh, ecological aid, stress, stress aid, a bit in their training them uh, on these programs. Uh, so briefly, it is, and I would like to express my high expression uh, for all uh, of us who contribute. We uh, receive many feedbacks. So. Uh, Kindly thanks on behalf of all your Ukrainians to your efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Victor. Uh, obviously, we work with Ukraine. On, with Ukraine, we are mostly working on issues related to trauma. So that's uh, really uh, where we are active. So I will ask now our, our good friend, Dr. Sherry Kelly, with a wonderful uh, uh, neuropsychologist, uh, researcher, author, networker, everything. I have to say, uh, with Linda Montgomery and myself, Sherry is certainly one of the most uh, involved members of the Mental Wellness Society because I know that she starts to send things early in the morning or late at night and she's very active, she's doing a lot of things. But, uh, and she's very, she's co-chairing the task force in Ukraine with me. So she's, but she's involved so much in everything we do. Uh, but she is also the, she's the chair uh, of the education on parenting group that we have. So let's introduce your group, uh, Sherry. We have uh, four oh, groups coming. You. Now it's your group. Okay, thank you. Uh, you are uh, in Dr. Florida, but you're I'm also in, in Connecticut. I'm in Florida today, but I commute to Connecticut. Um, and it, I think one of the, the best prerequisites I have for being a member of the Mental Wellness Society is being uh, having chronic insomnia. So I'm able to communicate with people at all hours of the night, which is great. <laughs> so I'm so thrilled to be here and to be with so many of you today. I'm honored to be the chair of the parenting and education group, um, as well as working with um, so many wonderful colleagues in the Ukraine task force. So the parenting and um, education group is comprised, I believe now of more than uh, 60 members. Um, we have some crossover with other groups. Um, we have members literally from all over the world. Um, many of our members are educators. So um, if initially what we're, what we're doing is networking with people to find out what their common needs are, what they're seeing as the needs of the populations they work with, what their gifts are um, to be a force for good in the world, uh, whether it's 
crisis management, whether it's psychology, um, teaching, art therapy, social work. We have a diverse group of people. Um, one of the, I think, amazing resources uh, within our group are the many educators that we have. And so I'm looking forward to working with Rinda in collaborating with our educators and our psychologists in developing uh, courses for not only uh, educators around the world, but also for paraeducators um, and graduate students um, that might want to learn more about social emotional learning, um, neurodiversity in learning, and then of course, parenting and caregiving, especially during challenging times. So um, I'm gonna segue into that also. Um, I've worked with, with Victor and uh, Dr. Meyer and Victor and I did, I think a very high impact webinar for mothers um, and also therapists in Ukraine a couple of months ago. That's been rebroadcast a couple of times. And I think Victor shared with me, we have had over a thousand people watch that webinar. Um, I also, I work as co-chair of the Child and Education um, committee of the Connecticut Psychological Association. And I brought together the Connecticut Psychological Association and the American Psychological Association with Mental Wellness Society and um, the National Ukrainian um, Psychology Association. I hope I have that in the right order um, with Valeria and Victor. So uh, we have a lot of different initiatives that we're starting and that we are also continuing to work on to really bring together our resources to enact um, change for the good, enact support, especially for children and parents and educators around the world that are experiencing very challenging circumstances, not only in Ukraine, but our programming is very app applicable to places that we have not yet even discussed, but I know are very much there. I'm particularly looking forward to working with um, my dear friend Whitney on an initiative in uh, Nigeria for girls um, that we talked about a couple months ago. So Dr. Victor, any questions for me? Hello. No I've doc and, and no. Dr. Abraham, any questions for me? Uh, no, just uh, one element uh, is uh, the logic also we have with education. It's also because neuroeducation is important, but also with psychology, because we are very much involved in metacognitive positive psychology. And that's mm. what is mindful choice. But yes. we are extremely involved in metacognition, which is to know how you know and to think how you think. So this is something we teach to children. And Rinda will touch more on that subject in a few minutes because she will be explaining more our educational uh, goal and activities. But the idea is to help children, community, parents, educators, to be able to adjust, to be more resilient to societal stress. And yeah. we, our goal is to do it from the early age, because now it's not a matter to learn uh, what you have in books. It's a matter to learn how do you survive? How do you strive? How do you deal with stress? How do you deal with others? So it's really about resilience. So yes. that's uh, the, the, the common point on that. You want to touch yes, one, that one was, second about that, that? Yes, that was our big um, webinar that we did for Ukrainian mothers and therapists was how to raise resilient kids in times of crisis. And I really believe, and as a neuropsychologist, as well as a clinical psychologist, I, I endorse the, the programs of Mental Wellness Society and the Mindful Choice Academy as programs that I think are the most effective and also the most, I guess I'd say, um, time-saving um, for teaching parents and children and teachers about being 
cognitively flexible. And it's this flexibility um, that is going to build resistance, as mm -hmm. well as the solutions focused rather, the pro rather than the problem focused uh, strategies that we are teaching um, our educators and parents and children. Thank so it's you. a new way of thinking about learning and thinking about problem solving. Thank you. I would not have said it better. You did it very well. Thank so you. with that, we have now two co-chair for the health and wellness professional. We have Lisa Goldenthal and Kate Nietzsche. Uh, you both have two minutes to speak about yourself and your uh, group in the Mental Wellness Society. Who we'll starts, Kate or Lisa? I will start. Thank you, Dr. Abe, uh, for that introduction. And I'm extremely grateful to be here um, with this opportunity and with all of you who have been able to join from wherever you are today. Um, I'm Kate Nitschke. I reside in the Midwest, Wisconsin of the U.S. In a moment, you'll hear from my fellow uh, co-chair Lisa. Uh, she's got LA covered. So we've got half of the U.S. covered between the two of us, specifically representing the Mental Wellness Center as co-chairs. Um, as Dr. Abe has shared, and as you see in front of you, we represent the health and wellness professionals together for the Mental Wellness Society. And the health and wellness professionals that we help represent are integrated medicine, doctors, surgeons, um, nutritionists, movement, acupuncturist, chiropractors, and so forth. By background, I'm a kinesiologist, and by career, I've become a C-suite leader in health, wellness, and fitness, working to transform the way we can deliver healthcare through access, support, resources, and education. So my common purpose with Lisa, with all of you today, with the Mental Wellness Center uh, Society, excuse me, is to really um, bring opportunities further on one's mental health, one's physical health, quality of life, and longevity. Together, we can do great things when it comes to meeting people where they are in their healthcare continuum and on their journey. Lisa and I also share um, uh, support on the Ukraine task force. We recently uh, went uh, live with Dr. Abe. Uh, when you heard Sherry talk about resiliency, we spoke about physical health on mental health uh, for your overall improvement and resiliency and well being. And it was just such an awesome uh, area to be able to share with folks and shed light on how important this topic is. It always has been, it always will be. And I'm really excited in a minute, uh, Lisa, you can share more about our vision and mission together with the health and wellness professionals. Uh, because Lisa has, is really well renowned and well known in the US, she gets high traction is super passionate about this topic, as am I, and we have fun along the way. So with that, Lisa, I'll turn it over to you and you can share more as my fellow co-chair. Hi, Lisa. Oops. Thanks, Kate, for the wonderful introduction. And hi, everybody from Los Angeles. And I'm the international bestselling author of The Boss Weight Loss and this Skinny Jeans Workout. And our vision is to bring further awareness to the cause of mental wellness society in this time of crisis in both physical and mental health to enhance one's mental health, physical health, and promote longevity. So our mission, we would love to provide essential resources and access towards the betterment of each individual's mental and physical health with simple content on how to take one small step to form habits which improve your overall quality of life so that you can be healthier, happier, and more fit and achieve that elusive work-life balance. And since we last met, um, we are working on just outlining some modules at a very high level that we would like to create um, with feedback from you guys, we we just briefly described four modules of what our course could look like with number one being mindset for mental wellness. And that would include step one for peak performance and optimal health, and then cover limiting beliefs and 
how that holds us back and then acceptance, self-esteem and retraining your brain so that you don't let the old reptilian brain take over with positive self-talk and how you can be anti-fragile and unstoppable, unbreakable, uninterruptible, unshakable in uncertain times. So we'd like to really be a light for the that line of physical and mental health and how it's connected and all the positive BDNF and endorphins, things that you can achieve just simply through exercise alone. And the second module we have talked about creating simple exercise plans for busy lives. And I've been doing this for 14 years since my skinny jeans workout came out. I have the shorter workouts for busy bosses and it's still relevant. So just it, however much time you have is better than not doing it. So consistency is what I believe is important for exercise. And the other three modules will be a biohacking nutrition plan for fitness, longevity, and everyday sustainable living in these uncertain times and the rules of nutrition. What Thank are you, they? Lisa. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. But we have to try to limit it to two minutes per person. Okay. Point. So, okay. So, uh, with thank you so much. So let's speak about the agent of ch of change uh, in uh, corporate and training team on how we bring mental wellness in corporation. Uh, we have uh, Diana Petzold from um, Belgium, and we have Isaac Garcia from Texas, who is trying to reach us uh, from Ireland as we speak. So as uh, I am not sure, I have not seen Isaac uh, present on the, uh, on the system, I will give uh, Diana instead uh, four minutes to be able to talk about your group. Diana. Are you with us, Diana? Diana Pizzol, we are looking for you. Well? Well, oh, Gerard, I'm Dr. Meyer. She is in, I believe, Panama right now, so she might not have a good um, connection. She's so we Costa can Rica. just go. She says she's in Costa Rica and she, her connection is poor. Okay. okay. So uh, we'll speak for them a few minutes. Uh, the, the group of uh, agent of change and corporate training are really a group which is uh, working to help corporation and to have a wellness concept uh, at the level of the executive, top executive, but to instill it also at the level of the corporation. Because if you want to limit uh, turnover, if you want to limit absenteeism, the sick days on stress problem, uh, you need to be able and also to change because the society is making a lot of change and companies are to be more uh, versatile on changing very quick. So that creates difficulties for the workers and for management. And there is a lot of burnout, stress on the, the task of this group is to use all the mental tools we have, mind and body, from the group uh, involved in health and wellness and from psychology and education uh, to be able to help corporation. And that's Diana is a very well-known um, coach. She has clients all over the world. And Isaac is a trainer in something called uh, in uh, uh, something called uh, the, uh, the new uh, type of training, which was before Six Sigma, and uh, uh, nowadays is much more involved in agile. And the agile uh, is a way to help corporations to organize and be more efficient. So Isaac is helping to have a program where he helps with Agile uh, to bring 
psycho metacognitive uh, positive psychology into corporation. So that was that group. So now we will have the group of uh, Maris, Maridi Stolsky and Bernardo Merizald, uh, two minutes each, uh, to speak about their group, which is psychology, life coach, and uh, psychiatry. So who start? Uh, Dee, you, you want to start, Dee? Sure, I'll start. Okay, um, Our group has been very active and it's growing all the time. Um, I, I saw 51 referrals and, um, and join people who have joined in just the last five months. And it is uh, people from all different walks of psychology. Um, I think the biggest thing is that we are seeing is how to uh, actively change therapy to include mindfulness in the active process of therapy and teaching people how to do it daily. So it's actually becoming part of therapy. And we talk about that people are experts in so many walks of therapy and they're integrating it into what they're doing and we the topics that are discussed in our team on our you know within our team are so many <laughs> that i can't even name them all but we go from suicide health emotional regulation so we have experts in all kinds of things in fact it's hard to narrow down one focus in, in, our, in our team. But um, it's wonderful because it's very active and it is touching all different aspects of psychology and therapy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your uh, intervention. I will ask Bernardo to continue. Thank you, Abraham. I just uh, thank you very much, Mary D, for really doing the work that you're doing with the group. And uh, it, we really would like to uh, see how the group itself also can integrate with other teams. As I was listening to Koti uh, share her, her work right now with Argentina, I think that in each individual group, there probably are individuals who could help with that by complementing in other areas. So it's not just mental health, but we're looking at physical health and uh, physical training, and we're looking at education, and we're looking at working with corporations. So it's not just how each individual team operates, but how the, all the teams can work concurrently. One of the things that I was thinking is that listening to the issue with refugees, Colombia has a huge issue with refugees from Venezuela because it is the neighbor and there has been a lot of trauma there. And so that those of us in the group, in each individual team, even from the education team, somebody that has, that speaks Spanish, for example, will be very helpful because one of the issues with unfortunately, with other countries is that because we don't speak their primary language, it is really difficult to frame interventions in that way for most of us who at least help. But some of the materials could be translated by that particular team. But in Latin America, we have that problem with the refugees from uh, from Venezuela, but also issues that have happened in Bolivia and sometimes in, in Argentina and Chile at different times in history. So we need to be able to be prepared to collaborate together. So I really appreciate that. And I appreciate the opportunity to be part of this incredible, incredible team. Just when I started seeing the work uh, that uh, that you did, Abraham, with, uh, with the Mental Wellness uh, uh, Society and how it started caring for people and giving materials for education, which I think is really, really important. I am an assistant clinical professor at Thomas Jefferson University, and I'm uh, an attending at the Marcus Brin Institute of Integrative Health. And I think that bringing this to a larger population, to into public health at large, extending to the world, I think is, is an incredible mission and an incredible vision. So I really appreciate the opportunity to be part of this enterprise. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Bernardo. And by the way, uh, speaking about Spanish speaking, you are very lucky because the vice president of uh, academic affairs, uh, Rinda Montgomery, is fluent in Spanish. 
So, oh, my, fantastic. So that, that will help you with the curriculum development. Okay, oh. with that said, uh, I guess I need to give you a few news about the Mental Wellness Society. And I will uh, tell you that right now. I'm going to give you, to tell you as briefly as I can, uh, all what we are. So the Mental Wellness Society is almost 1,100 members on LinkedIn. It's 284 facilitators in 72 countries. Uh, we are in uh, 43 states of United States. And uh, we have created uh, a tool for communication for the member, uh, which is basically uh, we created our own Facebook uh, of communication uh, with a library, with, uh, with uh, everything we can put on the, on the system to help people to access information and to communicate to one each other. And we have 398 members on that. We, we are not looking to be too many numbers because uh, I need to remind you that we have uh, an organization where we hand, hand pick and invite people with whom we want to be. The idea is to build a build to a big uh, wellness, uh, not just mental, but mind and body wellness toolbox with specialists all over the world, with experts. So this way we can very quickly get very good opinion and see how we can build program which makes sense uh, on program which does, don't necessarily exist uh, before. But together, we can do a lot of those things. So more than the Mental Wellness Society, we, next slide, please. OK. So we have been developing different initiative activities. So we have a, 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 a partnership with Israel Trauma Coalition. They have 38 centers throughout the world, but as you know, Israel is living on the terrorism every day. And nevertheless, uh, we are developing pretty well the technology, the economy, and we are living despite that. And that is something because we have preparedness and we have very good uh, expertise in dealing with trauma. So we share that, for example, with Ukraine. We made a partnership with 1,500 psychologists of the National Psychology Association of Ukraine, and we do a lot of training for them. No, yes, thank you. A lot of training for them that we are doing, and we are also making available technology. For example, Kenku is an app where you put your finger here. Uh, I hope you can see me. And you put your finger, and it tells you if you have a lot of stress. It's a biofeedback app, and uh, if you are uh, if, if close to burnout and if you need to breathe. So that app will be made available to as many uh, Ukrainian people who want it or people in America who want to help Ukrainian or Ukrainian refugee in camps. We are partnering also with Mental Health Global Challenge, the organization of Victor. We have an activity. Uh, we do a lot of uh, uh, seminar, webinar, trainings uh, in the programming. And uh, we have also a field care Ukraine task force, plus an initiative in Lincoln, Nebraska, where Scott Donkin, who is present with us, will be able to say a few words about it, where we train Ukrainian in America uh, to go to mission in uh, refugee camps or to help. So there is 1,500 Ukrainians living in, in Lincoln, Nebraska. And this is for us a test, a model. And if that works, we will team up more people uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, Ukraine. But we train them, and that's a program we have done. In terms of uh, uh, what we are developing, next slide, please. We have some innovative endeavor. I will, three of them are very important. One is a mind on movement on mood wellness center. It's a center where you get all the service. We trained a chiropractic practice 
uh, who is used to help people with stress for readjustment. But because they are stressed, uh, they have a bad position, they don't sleep well, and there is a problem which is a cognitive problem, an emotional problem. So we help to do to solve that, and that's an all-inclusive center where we have mind and movement uh, and mood center. And this is starting in July in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. Uh, so that's what we are. We also have a world conference that we're organizing at Tel Aviv University on resilience, which is a big subject and a big trend, and people need to learn to be resilient. And finally, we have the, mental, uh, the Mindful Choice Academy with the educational arm of the Mental Wellness Society. So I don't need to tell you what they do the best. Uh, Dr. Lebovitz and uh, Rinda Montgomery will be explaining you everything about the Mindful Choice Academy. Uh, Bobby and uh, Dr. Lebovitz and Rinda, uh, floor is yours. Maybe thank you can start much. with Dr. Lebovitz. Thank you, thank you. Um, I'm, it's very nice to see everybody here today. Um, this is really exciting every to get together like this. And even though this is a small smattering you know, of, of what the Mental Wellness Society has to offer, um, it is gratifying in the short time that we've been around to create something that is so exceptionally valuable. Um, one of the in initiatives, in, along with the Mental Wellness Society, Dr. Meyer and I also in, in, engaged and created the Mindful Choice Academy. That is an education and training institution that we created specifically for the purpose of enhancing positive personal effectiveness, as you can see on the logo, and mental wellness. Um, it's a platform for teaching the mindful choice method um, in all its forms and applications. And we're, we have customized it. We've developed it for trauma. We've developed it for first responders. It has a tremendous amount of potential, which um, Dr. Montgomery is going to speak about in a minute. Um, we have, I'm just going to quote from the, from the website what our mission statement says. Uh, the Academy's mission is advancing all aspects of living through clarity, focus, energy, and well-being to fully realize one's potential by developing powerful and innovative tools and processes to provide a transformative educational experience for students, focusing on interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary knowledge, problem solving, and enhanced decision making, leadership, communication, interpersonal skills, and personal development. What Mary D was talking about when she was sharing with you all about the in, incorporating the the mindfulness, the the both the the um, you might say the body aspect of well-being. That is something that the Mindful Choice Academy has done a great deal uh, of work to do. And when you when you hear more about it, I think you'll be very um, impressed and actually find it very, very compatible with many of the things that you all are doing. So um, I'm gonna ask Dr. Montgomery, who is the Vice President for Acad Academic Affairs for the Mindful Choice Academy, to really go into more depth and to really share what, what it is and, and how it has potential for all of you as well. So, Rinda. Thank you. It's nice to be here. And it's so wonderful to see everybody. Um, I'd like to focus on Whitney Edna. She's our first author whose course is coming <laughs> to publish. Um, <clears throat> I, uh, if we could go to the next slide, the, the, the function of the, um, of the Academy is to provide various offerings as needed by uh, the people who come to us. So not only will we have uh, university credit courses in, including course series, which um, will take the learners from being consumers of knowledge to producers of knowledge to uh, eBooks and seminars and masterclasses and pretty much anything that can be of assistance to people learning to blend their discipline with mental wellness societies um, concepts, a mindful choice model. And um, that storefront is being activated now. We're testing the monetization of it. And those um, materials are starting to be loaded. 
Uh, we will also have a library and various other services. And it's not limited to what you see, whatever you produce that others can um, find benefit from or things that we would like to offer through the Mindful Choice Academy. Currently, uh, we have over 120 course title suggestions that we're working through. We want to start our launch with at least uh, three, uh, 30 course series, which would mean um, 90 courses, but um, you have to start with course A. <laughs> uh, so the 30 will be seen first. Um, we have over 40 subject matter experts that have been recommended to me and that I'm communicating with. We have 70 topic areas that people have brought to our attention. And of course, this covers all of the areas that we've been discussing, all of the special interest groups here um, that we've talked about. And we have uh, presenters who are going to work in English, Spanish, Ukrainian, Hebrew, Malaysian, Chinese, and Cambodian so far. Um, Arabic. Arabic. Arabic, Spanish. I got Spanish. And Chinese. I got Chinese. Okay. Yeah. So if we could go to the next slide. Our target interest groups are really anyone in this day and age, you can imagine that's everyone who needs to understand how to incorporate mind and body wellness, resilience into their daily lives in every aspect of their living. Whole, whole body wellness, whole mind body wellness is, um, doesn't come naturally. You have to work at it and being able to blend it with all aspects of your life is what makes this a systemic approach that makes all the difference. Um, so we are, um, my company is Paradigm Learning Systems. We are learning solutions architects and we are working with the Mental Wellness Society and their subject matter experts and everybody that we network with who has uh, resources to bring to um, the Mindful Choice Academy. Um, here are some of the groups that we're working with. It's not limited to that, but those are the target interest groups that we would like to um, move toward as we're marketing this. Uh, thank you, Nelson. Uh, email me and let's, um, let's have a talk about being part of the uh, Academy faculty. If you could go to the next slide. Our access will be uh, synchronous and non-synchronous. We will be able to have you um, record lectures or do them live. You can have live interaction with the students if you're a faculty member or have it completely asynchronous. Um, some of the courses will offer college credit. Some will offer credit from the a Mental Wellness Society certification for becoming a Mindful Choice trainer or support person. Um, uh, there will be all kinds of opportunities online. And um, we hope that you'll bring to us those resources that you have that we could, um, that we could share with everyone. We have our own learning, learning management system. Faculty will be provided opportunities to get uh, into classroom situations with the students. There will be internal communication system. Um, and I, I understand I've taught globally, so it, sometimes that managing that is a little difficult when you have people in, you know, 15 different time zones, but you can do it. It can work and we'll show you how we'll coach you through that. So um, our final slide shows the timeline. We've been put back a little bit because of the war in Ukraine and all of the work that has necessarily gone uh, toward supporting the, um, our friends and neighbors there. Um, but we're launching our first courses in July, and we will be uh, presenting this material at the, uh, the coach, the conference that's going to be occurring this summer later in Europe. Thank you, Rinda. I will add one or two things. Uh, number one, you are also involved in the, the Mindful Choice Academy. Some course will be eligible for credit from uh, Oregon University. Western Oregon University is providing uh, credit through multiple departments. They have a, a, a well-known teaching department, but there are seven deans who are meeting with us to talk about the various courses that are being offered and having them uh, approved through their uh, programs. On, on many of the program which will be taught by uh, our faculty in Mindful Choice Academy, we will be able to see <laughs> 
which programs could be useful to go immediately to be cloned uh, for education, school, school board, parenting education. And then uh, Rinda uh, team will be able to adapt it to education, uh, education world. Uh, at this point, that academy is obviously an online academy, but uh, it's a, an online academy made for people who are interested with the subject we have, but also for one each other of the member to learn from each other. So this is also made to, to be able to share the tool that we have together, because the priority to the academy is given to the members of the Mental Wellness Society. So, I, so I like that. I'm sorry. Yes, go on. No, I was just going to add just to I, I, I want to make this explicit because I think I just want to make sure everyone understands we are we are offering and inviting every member of the Mental Wellness Society to put together a course offering to create a course to be an author to be a contributor to the Mindful Choice Academy where you would have your course be presented and be provided to, you know, to um, anyone who'd be interested. And obviously, you know, there would be um, you as authors or, and or presenters that would be compensated as the mindful, from the Mindful Choice Academy. So anyone who's got an idea, anyone who has a course that they have always wanted to teach, please present it to Dr. Meyer, Dr. Montgomery, and, and we want to develop it because we really want the Mindful Choice Academy to be a platform where someone can go and learn about anything and enhance their lives that way. So whatever it may be, whatever course you might be thinking of, of and you'd really like to, like to share it with the world, please, this is a platform for you. Thank so you. Thank you, Dr. Lebovitz. Uh, also, uh, uh, we have a department where we help with the course when we build the course. We have uh, created, created a, a subsidiary department where we will help to publish books because the books are becoming the companion tool for the course, but it could be published all over the world as we have an, a, a, a global audience. So at this point, we are now where we want to have the members to speak and we want to know more about you and how uh, we can work with you, what you think the Mental Wellness Society should be doing. So our first speaker is, uh, uh, is uh, Whitney uh, Ibne uh, from, Iv from Ivory Coast. And uh, she's very much involved with us. Uh, she's also involved in the media and communication department, she's overseeing everything we do in terms of communication. So Whitney, your turn. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Abraham. Two minutes. Yes. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I'm happy to be here and to see all of you. Um, yeah. Think about all the physical comforts that you desire. You know, perhaps you want to buy a bigger house or you know, go on a lavish vacation. But just when you're about to achieve it, you discover that you can have it because you have probably a mental illness or a physical illness or emotional illness. Now, this is what I stand for. I stand for the mentally challenged, you know, the physically abused, the downtrodden in the society, I want, to, I want to create a society where irrespective of what, what you're going through, you can achieve your dreams. And to do that, joining Mental Wellness Society has helped to pave the way. It started with Dr. Abraham connecting me with Dr. Rinda, who is in charge of the Mindful Choice Academy and giving me the leverage to you know, showcase my passion and I look forward to it coming out very soon. Now, I also work with, look forward to working with Dr. Sherry someday here in Africa and bringing complete awareness to mindful living 
poor Africans. This is not something we easily talk about here in Africa. I wanna see that change in the nearest future. I wanna see an Africa that I can beat my chest and stay well mentally stable, you know, and we can face whatever challenges that comes our way. And of course, I wanna see an interaction between um, all the members to create a synergy where we all can relate to one another, irrespective of what we do and how we do it. So I could conclude by saying that working with Mental Wellness Society has been a tremendous blessing and um, I look forward to it growing beyond this. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Dr. Scott Donkin, are you still with us? Uh, you are yes, I am, yes, yes, I am. Okay, Scott Donkin is a chiropractor in uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. He's a very well-known author. Uh, he's a, a very well-known chiropractor. But I need, for honest, full disclosure, explain that we have been friends and working together for over 25 years now. Uh, when I was uh, involved at Carnegie Mellon University. So Scott, I've seen the very beginning of the concept of what we are doing now. And uh, <clears throat> Scott, take it from there. You have two minutes. Okay, thank you, Gerard. And uh, I remember well the uh, times about 25 years ago where I- We don't see you. Oh, okay, just a moment. All right, how's okay. that? Okay, oh, we right. have you, okay. So I remember- uh, uh, that long ago, uh, we worked together. I worked uh, under your leadership to develop the health and wellness department at the uh, Carnegie Mellon Driver Training and Safety Institute, where a lot of the principles and paradigms of mindful choice were being researched. And through that time, uh, after the research study was concluded, you expanded it and worked with your founders to develop mindful choice. Um, the M3 centers, mind, movement, and mood centers are gonna be, it's the first physical facility that fuses online and on-site uh, services and products uh, for mindful choice. So I've dedicated uh, three rooms in my office, a common rehab room and a common reception area uh, to help develop the mind movement and mood wellness centers as a template so that then we can uh, use it and build it in, in other areas of the world. Um, and one example, I remember uh, of how, the, how things can grow within mental wellness society is uh, when the conflict in Ukraine started, uh, Victor would uh, communicate with uh, Gerard and other members of the Mental Wellness Society. And uh, he created, uh, Gerard created a task force that other people could join in and see what was needed. And uh, people stepped up from other areas of the uh, Mental Wellness Society in order to contribute to make the programs that are being developed today in Ukraine. Well, I treat many Ukrainian uh, families here in Lincoln, and I know that they have a lot of uh, stress involved with their loved ones uh, in Ukraine. And so one of the things that we can do as a, as a physical facility is help to provide services for them locally that then they can uh, become stronger, more resilient so that they can help their uh, fellow Ukrainians in Ukraine. And also we can train the volunteers in order to uh, have uh, a better uh, mental resilience in going through their stressful times. Thank you, Scott. I will ask now uh, Justin Friedman, who is in Israel. Uh, Justin has been very active also for the uh, Ukraine task force because she provided a direction of what people should eat to prevent stress and to, to be able to the, the what to do, not what to do uh, in terms of nutrition. Uh, Justin, your turn. You are a specialist of the mood and gut uh, connection. Gerard, it's lovely to be here. I don't always get a chance to join the meetings, so I'm very grateful I could join today. Um, my, my biggest focus and one of my passions is understanding the connection between the food that we eat and how it impacts our mood and our thoughts and our actions as a result of that. So we know from a research point of view that when we have a poor diet and our gut microbiome is not uh, in balance, that we have a decreased production of serotonin in the body as well as dopamine and many other um, hormones and neurotransmitters as well. And what this does is it has a knock-on effect to our mood. It causes higher levels of anxiety and depression 
and low mood and, and many mood disorders that are being now linked to poor gut function. And uh, the problem with this is that when our mood is affected, it affects our thoughts and then it affects our actions in the world. And this not only has a problem for us internally in our internal world and how we think and feel about our own lives, but in our interactions with other people. And so much more so today, I think, than ever before with the amount of processed foods that people are eating and the fast foods that people are eating. There's a, a lot of um, disease that we see in coming from the gut dysbiosis that, that ends up happening. So I've been very um, active in trying to do as much research on this as possible. And it's a very challenging topic to get down onto paper as to how to explain it because there's so much information out there. But what I see in my in my practice working with, with patients is that the more I focus on gut health, the better the, the outcomes are across the board. Working with women with menopause, working with, um, you know, just inflammatory conditions and autoimmune conditions, and um, a lot of people also who, who typically do suffer with anxiety and depression, and even though they may be medicated, purely fixing the, the, the type of food that they're eating and reducing refined sugars and, and saturated fats and improving the quality of their food choices has a big impact on their mood and their feelings of wellness and health that, they, that they're experiencing in their lives. So this is something that there's... A, so much research out there and I'm just I think I'm, I've only touched the top of the iceberg but there's a lot still coming thank God thank you so much I will ask now uh, a dear friend Jonathan McDonald from London Jonathan uh, I don't even know how to start to introduce you you are uh, very productive you are uh, doing a lot of activity maybe you can explain that but what is important is Jonathan have been one of the very very first members to join the Mental Wellness Society. So he have definitely seniority. Jonathan, you have two minutes. Nice, nice to see you, mate. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. Is that, is it, can you hear me? Yes. Speaking of the speaker, um, was in care. Right. Essentially, um, hold on. Uh, uh, approached me when he was first setting up the Mental Wellness Society to, to help represent him in London as a sort of coordinator. I am mostly a connector of people and and ideas, so I, I produce content for social media, which is um, unusual because of my strange brain uh, what I'm doing in terms of mental wellness uh, my contribution to society is is this potency.world which I invite you to look at the website www.potency.world basically all of you guys are specialists in solving broken humans Whereas it seems to me it would be a lot better to create them not broken in the first place. So Potency.World is an idea for five 10,000 girl-only academies. They'll be completely secure. Boarding will be available to all of the girls. We'll provide them with MacBooks, iPads and iPhones, which will be tied to our broadcast channel so that effectively... Rather than a young girl coming out into secondary school and going, oh, shit, this is what the world wants of me, she'll go into these environments whereby 20% of the time is how we're going to look after you, mental wellness, mindfulness, yoga, physical exercise, all the things that have been talked about 20% of the time, 80% of the time we go, what part of the world do you want to change? What do you want to make a difference? How do you want to change the world? Let me help you do that. Because between 11 and 18 all we're doing at the moment is exercising the muscle of remembering things, maybe marginally spitting out the output. That is not producing humans suitable for today, least of all when they come out of education. So that's my thing, basically. Ta -da. Thank you so much. I will ask now uh, Sue Fox uh, to come with us. I believe that Sue is in Dallas, Texas, and uh, she will be talking to us uh, two minutes to introduce herself. She's a new member 
and maybe she will be able to give us a perspective of what a new member would like to see the organization to do. I love that you just asked that question. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes, thank you for the um, intro. I am a new member and I've been enamored with this organization that I connected to very uh, interestingly how I got connected with Dr. Meyer through a long time contact with Koti from 30 years ago. So it's nice to come back full circle. Um, I'll start with as a new member, some things I'd love to see. I think this call has been very helpful. Um, I think it's been a little interesting being on the Mighty Networks platform and seeing some of the speakers. This is trying, this is actually lifting up 30,000 feet and helping give a, a wider perspective of what the Mental Wellness Society does that as a new member, I think could have been helpful as an, as a, as an introduction right when I joined. Some of that is on me and some of that, you know, I think there's a play of what is spoon fed and what I proactively seek. But I think this wider perspective of what this amazing organization does has been very helpful today. Um, there are times when I am on the network that it's, I don't know how many people use it. It's sometimes it feels like when you're actually on the platform, very few people are actively using that platform aside from kind of more of the active leader. So I'm curious to know how many people are using that as a network to interact with each other. Um, I am a leadership 300, coach. In Dallas, roughly 300 Dallas. people. Sorry? Roughly 300 people. So 300 people. But are people using it is the question. Yes, using it. Okay. Using yeah, it. Yeah, okay. Um, but maybe not great. at the time that you do. Okay, <laughs> that's great. Um, okay, well then that's on me. That's not, uh, that's not, it's just, I'm looking through my own people from Dallas, Texas. Um, it is a gift to be part of this network. Um, I am a leadership coach in Dallas, Texas. I'm actually relatively new coming out in my own career. Um, but what I, my particular specialty is focusing on the power of brain science, habit, and story, and using a skillful use of inquiry and words when it comes to helping leaders be their best selves. And I have a growing interest in helping younger high potential leaders, um, as I think that there's a there's a big difference. I think um, with some of what I see in the younger generation and the impact of technology and wellness and what they have access to. So I'm really really um, passionate about that area, um, and I'm excited to be a part of this. I'm talking with Koti about um, a course that I'll be hoping to offer called a CAT scan of a conversation and the power of what's beneath the words and conversation if we were to do a CAT scan of, of the word, the spoken word. Thank you. I will ask now, uh, well, uh, does she disappear? Mrs. Jacobson? Yes, here she is. Okay. So we want to hear about Canada now, Calgary. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm. Wow. All I can say is, wow, what a group, what a community you pulled together here. And you're all speaking to my soul. Almost every one of you um, I can see an alignment with. What, what I do, I've got a company called UEQ Global, and we help people develop and elevate emotional intelligence, which encompasses emotional resilience, emotional agility, emotional maturity, emotional responsibility, all of those things. Um, what's unique about us, though, is, um, is that we do it through card games. So we incorporate game dynamics so that the skills that we teach in conversation training in our conversational training actually become a habit just by playing the games. Um, and, you know, it, it's just a passion of mine, the emotional realm. You can't really separate that from mindfulness. The thoughts drive the emotions, emotions drive the thoughts. Um, what we can do is train people to be aware of what, what thoughts are happening, what emotions are happening, and how to elevate that. So that's, um, that's my area of passion. We do it through, like I say, through card games. And um, we do have those, right now it's translated into Spanish, um, obviously started in English. And we work with people from two-year-olds right up to 102 years old and into professional athletics, into parenting, into the corporate world. We've got over 30 decks 
that we that we work with. So um, it's just I can just see such an alignment with everything that people have said here. It's just such it's so desperately needed in the world in every realm of life. And I really agree with those that have talked about let's get this to um, children. Let's start them younger, being aware of you know, how they're having conversations, how they're managing their emotions, how they can step into their power. And, um, and sorry, that's, <laughs> that's my timer. I could talk forever. Okay. Honestly. Thank you so much. So, uh, actually, uh, it will be good if you can contact us to see what type part of game or decks the uh, cards or whatever we could be used uh, eventually in uh, Mindful Choice Academy, but you give me the opportunity to explain you also that in uh, Mindful Choice uh, Academy, we promote also cards. Uh, this one is, we have a set of 80 cards, which are uh, icon of situation, iconic situation. On this card, for example, is your past does not condition your future. So we are, we communicate through cards because we have found also uh, exactly uh, like you were saying now, we have found that there is a lot of miscommunication with word. So yeah. uh, if we can communicate with icon is much better. So the last person, uh, unfortunately, we have to go. Uh, we cannot pause, pause, pass too much our time, but I will have some listen with a good friend of uh, Sherry Kelly uh, to be the last speaker for two minutes, and then I will have to uh, end the meeting. Sam? Yes, uh, wait a minute. Hello. Hello. Hello, thank you very much. For calling on me and thank you very much for this very informative meeting. Uh, this has really been very helpful to me to understand better the broad activity of the Mental Wellness Society and is helping me to give direction to why, where I can uh, come to express myself um, and to find myself in, in these, uh, these things and that has been very, very uh, important to me. Uh, one thing that I've been doing has been developing a model, a comprehensive model for what I call positive psychotherapy. Um, beyond uh, applying positive psychology techniques, it's having a broader look at what I would call an image of man and how we would like, uh, let's say, our clients or people to look uh, at the end of the, uh, pro the psychotherapy process in terms of full living and uh, thriving and uh, it seems to me some of the things that have been spoken about uh, i could uh, uh, find myself uh, active in some aspects of what you've been talking about so thank you thank you and you are in israel in israel yes yeah okay and uh, i think we were talking about you also uh, about uh, mindful choice academy and we need to talk about that thank yeah. you so much all of you uh, we could not make everybody speak but we try to get the, as many people we can it's very frustrating frustrating but um we will have all the meetings i think we believe that we should have a meeting like that every quarter during the year where we are but your meeting will be in your group remember there is four groups plus the mental uh, Mindful Choice Academy and uh, the Ukraine Task Force. But there is four groups which are more with your specialty where you can be with your colleague and where you can work. And we create, this meeting is to create uh, a bridge between the different groups. But it's very important for you to, to work with the, uh, with the chair of your group and co-chairs because that's the way we will be able to grow and make more constructive work. I want to thank you, all of you. Uh, Abraham, the, I, I have, a, I have a, a quick question, if possible. Uh, go on. So uh, in- How uh, much? In how much? Two, well, I mean, one minute. No, I say how much? <laughs> how much do you want? In, <laughs> okay, in, prepare, in, pre <laughs> in preparing for this meeting and looking at how the team is working, I, I found myself at a loss for a broader connectedness. Uh, 
and, and looking at what guidelines we can use as team, as team chairs to be able to guide our group and how we can then start collaborating to make it, make it more functional. There are also, uh, I realized that, for example, with Mary, Mary and I, it seems that we're looking at different parts of the, 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 the certain databases or the websites. So she gets certain kind of information, I get a different kind of information. So it seems like there may be two different platforms and maybe I'm missing something, maybe I'm totally confused. So either okay, one. Okay, I can answer that one. Uh, we have uh, two online platforms. One is on LinkedIn where we are over a thousand people, but it's a LinkedIn open platform and we, we distribute information there on the people communicate. Out of that, we have the Mental Wellness Society and we have only one platform called uh, the, um, the, our global community platform. But if you have any question, uh, I will send you, uh, I will advise you to be in contact with the manager of all the activity, which is Celeste. And okay. I'm going to put Celeste uh, email address in this box. Uh, copy, okay, and now I'm putting it here in, in the chat. And you contact Celeste, and Celeste will be able to help you to navigate. We also have actually some uh, video how uh, to communicate and how you can do it. So I am going to chat here with you, chat. And I'm putting Celeste. Okay, you can contact Celeste and Celeste will help you on all the communication issue, Beautiful. including posting your post. If you make some post, we will post it on all social media, including facilitating for you the choice in a repertory of posts uh, that we have more than 120 that you can repost. So you get visibility because the post is made. You don't have to work on it and you just put it on LinkedIn or other social media with your name, it promotes you, it promotes us. And that's and, a way to do a lot of result. And, so, and if we connect with each other and we like each other and share each other's posts, then yes. the network is going to be, we will become a node in the website. So if we go as individuals, we're not going to get much traction. If we start getting together and liking and sharing each other's things, I think that's going to get our network much more powerful. Correct. And it, it helps also with uh, helping with the algorithm to increase your visibility. And this is something we can have a meeting whenever you want about media. Uh, and that's a meeting we can have with uh, Celeste at any moment, and few of you who are interested, how to uh, communicate and increase your personal image on social media. We can have a meeting like that if you want. That's, uh, a, great, that's a great idea. Okay, increasing social media visibility. Okay, we'll, we'll create that meeting. Cool. Okay. Well, Dr. Lebovich, I let you close. First, let me unmute. There we go. Again, I just want to echo what's been said, that this is an extraordinary organization, and this is uh, the, the potential here for synergies and for collaboration is uh, just is staggering. And let's hope in the uh, coming months that we actually implement some of those collaborations and create some things that are just gonna benefit people enormously. So I look forward to the engagement and the synergies to come. And I hope everyone uh, continues to participate and become even more participatory in the, in the organization. So thank you all for coming and I look forward to more participation. And you want to hear about you, please yeah. contact us. We want to hear about you. Yes. Okay, Thank take care. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank, Thank you, you all. Bye.